Go Vites! What's up everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Viking Spin. I'm your host Jason and I've got with me tonight uh, my two guys, Ryan Bianconi and Dom Bueno. Uh, Ryan, you, you with us? Yes sir. Ready to rock and roll and Alright Dom, you here? Yeah. Alright. Alright, we'll jump right into it fellas. Um, the Vikings are coming off a a 34 to 7 thrashing of the Cincinnati Bengals um, at home um, and uh, <clears throat> with the win the Vikings improved to 11 and 3 clinched the division for the NFC North and a playoff berth simultaneously uh, the Bengals dropped to 5 and 9 um, I'm going to start with you Dom since you were actually at this game um, looks like you, you got some you got some tickets there at the last minute and were able to go Tell us, uh, tell us some of the stuff you saw. Uh, we'll start with the Vikings offense. Well, the Vikings offense was just unbelievably good. Um, and what I understand was that uh, uh, he's keeping him only uh, completed, he completed three of his passes. Yeah, tw yeah, twenty of twenty-three. Um, yeah, a really accurate game, and um, I noticed Jarek McKinnon had, uh, I think, one hundred and fourteen receiving yards in the game. They were catching uh, Cincinnati with uh, with the screen pass quite a bit. Yep. Yeah, it looks like since, since he had a, a few linebackers out, um, it was also cool to see. Uh, the Vikings get over 100 yards rushing again. Uh, Murray had 76. Uh, McKinnon had another 24. And I think Case Keenum uh, had 30 or 40 yards rushing himself. And, and uh, Stephon Diggs added, I believe, another 7 or 8 yards. They, they ran some kind of a, almost a Percy Harvin-like play out of, with him coming out of the backfield. It's kind of cool to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, Diggs, he had that. He also had a touchdown catch. Um, as did Kyle Rudolph um, in the game. And it um, looks like um, defensively, um, I'll, uh, I'll kick it over to you, Ryan. Uh, three sacks in the game um, and two interceptions in the game for the Vikings defense and a, and a pick six. What, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. It was really, really uh, good reads by the Vikings defense there. Uh, they definitely did their homework on, on the coverage. Newman, very familiar with with the Cincinnati Bengals, of course. Um, him spending uh, some time there. And, um, you know, Mike Zimmer, the same thing. You know, it's kind of, um, 
he knew what they were going to do. They knew what he was going to do. And, you know, each side tried a few wrinkles, but um, our guy, Mike Zimmer, uh, came out out scheming them in the end. Yes, very much so. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, they also had uh, three sacks, two for uh, Brian Robinson and one for Daniil Hunter. Um <clears throat> yeah, they've they've definitely been able to um, they've been able to get a lot of uh, a lot of sacks out of their various nickel packages. I was reading some stuff on Vikings.com that um, you know a couple of the different looks. Um, you know, I know I know that Zimmer, you know, does some exotic things, but even I didn't know all the all the moving parts that are going along. Um, on some of these plays where they have, you know, it looks like it's going to be four down linemen, then you only see three, two, then, you know, then you got a, a, a safety and a, and a defensive lineman lined up at linebacker initially. Yeah. Um, and then they drop back. I mean, it's really confusing. Um, for a quarterback, looking at that at the line of scrimmage, I noticed on the Kendricks interception, um, Cincinnati – they thought the pressure was going to come, and they held their uh, running back in. So they have five guys blocking three, but then on the other end, they only have four guys going out for a pass against against eight defenders. Yes. And uh, all that by design from uh, from our head coach. Yeah, agreed. And then uh, I'll wrap it up here with special teams. Um, as far as the as far as the recap goes, um, two for two for Kai Forbath, including a 53-yard field goal, uh, plus four for four on extra points. So they got that uh, those issues corrected with the with the protection on the kicks too. Um, looks like the special teams punked and kick coverage I thought was outstanding. Ryan Quigley working with uh, with curse in this game uh, to, to oh, pin yes, them. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, they were pinning them down really well, uh, deep in their own territory. Um, if, if I may uh, interject ever so quickly, uh, Jason, uh, what's kind of interesting is we lost uh, uh, Locke in the offseason to the, to the Colts. Right. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think quickly has been a an underrated addition to this team. Uh, just the way he's able to put opponents in really bad spots this year. It's really helped the Vikings, um, you know, getting – with the good defense that we have, you know, sometimes we'll get them down there. You know, we get a three and out, and we're getting the ball back at the, you know, inside uh, our opponent's territory. And that's, that's led to a lot of uh, scoring success you know, for the Vikings offense. Uh, Dom, I'll kick it back over to you. You you saw firsthand of this game, the matchup between Xavier Rhodes and uh, A.J. Green. And once again, Rhodes rose to the challenge. Green did not get in, into the end zone. Oh, okay. Were you uh, up in the nosebleeds? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, but still. So fun. So fun. Uh, experience. Uh, my grab, my grab, uh, grandma's a season ticket holder, so she always likes to take one of her grandkids to the games and stuff. So. Oh, that's that's awesome, man. That is awesome, man. I'm I'm glad you had a real good time. I mean, I know I had a blast at the. Uh, at the Rams game, and the, the Vikings have, of course, been very complimentary of us fans being really loud at U.S. Bank Stadium. Uh, Zimmer tipped the cap to us fans again. I mean, I was in there, of course, but, I mean, he, he talked about how, how uh, the fans really did their part uh, in this victory in the uh, presser yeah. that he, today. I think it was today's presser he mentioned that. I thought that was pretty cool. I like, I like that he does that. 
Yeah, he, he really does. And he really understands the importance of the fans and the crowd noise. And, um, you know, I remember I was at the Rams game and, and um, you know, after the, the game, he credited us fans with making golf call, call a couple timeouts. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, that and, you know, I guess this kind of segues into our next uh, talking point here, fellas, is we're, we're playing... Dom, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot this over to you first. We're playing for home field advantage in the playoffs. And our next opponent is Green Bay. Now, as of this, uh, this recording right now, I know that the Atlanta game is still going on. Um, do you think that we're going to see Aaron Rodgers regardless of how this game turns out? Or do you think that Green Bay will only play him if they have a mathematical chance. What What do you think? I think, I think no matter what happens, they are going to be playing. I don't think they would play Rodgers just because how Minnesota's defense is so dominant. Yep. Oh yeah, he, he took. Yeah, <laughs> he definitely took some shots. Um, I'll say that. Um, Ryan, what do you think about this whole thing with the with the hate mail that Anthony Barr got and all the even even some of the initial emotions of Aaron Rodgers with you know the, we remember the the game where he got hurt. You know he was pretty mad and and cursing and everything. Do you think that that's kind of died down now? And that he's gonna, he and the Packers will do the smart thing and and sit him. Or do you think that he's really got a, a serious vendetta here? Um, I well, number one, I think it's absolutely trashy of fans to send Anthony Barr, uh, you know, tweets and, and emails and whatnot saying that he hopes that, like that person hopes that Barr gets into an accident and gets paralyzed or. Or, uh, you know, like, if, you, if I see you in person, I'll do this and that. You know, like, I think that has got to be some of the most classless responses to that. Right. Uh, it's kind of funny, you know, Barr's hit on Rodgers was perfectly legal. You can't pull up at that point because especially against a guy like Rodgers, if he, if he would have pump baked and kept going, and if Barr would have stopped, then Rodgers would have went right around him. So, you know what I mean? It's like you you got to take it both ways. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, you know, and I, you know, for me honestly, I, I don't really know which way that this is going to go. I think the Packers, from Mike McCarthy's comments today, that he was non-committal to Aaron Rodgers playing next week. Um, and this is, you know, now he said this before the Atlanta game tonight, so he's not even thinking about, you know, whether Atlanta wins or loses, but. It seems like McCarthy wants to shut Rodgers down for the season. Um, we'll see if um, if that is uh, what prevails in the end here. But uh, regardless of whether he plays or not, uh, their chances hinge on whether Atlanta uh, wins or loses tonight. If Atlanta wins, uh, Green Bay is eliminated. If Tampa Bay wins, and Green Bay has a 
a sliver of hope uh, having to win out and have uh, a lot of other things happen as well. But um, It's the uh, fourth quarter in that Tampa Bay-Atlanta game, and, and uh, Atlanta is up still by three. Okay, okay. So we're, uh, we're monitoring that situation. Um, and, um, well, you know... Oh, did they just score now? Okay. Thanks, Dom. That's a... Oh, wow, yeah. Look at that. All right. Well, the, the that could be <laughs> the final nail in the Packers' coffin there. That's it. That's it. Get rid of the cheese. <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to be shredding the cheese. And, and it was Matt Ryan <laughs> who shredded the cheese last year in the playoffs uh, in the Packers. <laughs> so he's doing it again to them. Um Sure. Um, what, what was your thoughts on Teddy Bridgewater coming back in those last 10 plays? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I figured that, you know, when when the Vikings had gone up 34 to nothing, I think it was Rudolph that caught that, uh, the short touchdown pass that was the last score there. I figured that that might happen. The Vikings might put some backups in. And I'm glad that he did get in because... Um, you in this league, you don't know really what's going to happen from week to week. Um, I mean, you know, we can go back to week one. and n- Nobody even knew after that game that Sam Bradford had gotten injured. Um, nobody foresaw Dalvin Cook getting injured in week four. Um, so you have to be ready. Um, you have to have your backups ready. And I think that that was one of the main points is to get him some reps. Now, I know it didn't go um, as good as he would have liked it to, but it was important for him to get in there, for Teddy to get in there and have live action and have you know defenders trying, trying to, to take him down. Um, just to get that game action versus just doing it in practice, I think, is going to be beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, <clears throat> you, you know what do you what do you think, Dom? You were, you're able to to see it. Um, you, you would you agree that it, it's good to to get some reps here just in case? Yeah, just in case. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it. It also now that you mentioned that some people have asked about. Um, you know, are, are the are the Vikings going to to rest players? You know, over these over these next two games, I don't I don't see anybody being rested next week because there's still seeding to play for, um, and it all depends on what happens. the The last game probably depends on what happens with um, with the Raiders in Philadelphia. Um, they're going to be playing next. And if the Raiders win, then we would actually still have something to play for in the last week to try to get the number one seed. So what what has to happen is Philly has to lose both of their games, and we have to win both of our games in order for that. Right, so we also have to keep an eye on what happens there. So I think it's probably too early to say whether, you know, people will be rested or not, but, um, you know, we'll see how it turns out. I, I mean, I, you know, the Chicago game, you know, if, if Chicago doesn't come to play, and, you know, maybe, maybe it turns into a game like the Cincy game and, uh, and a lot of guys can get in. But, you know, we'll have to see what happens uh going forward, but um, it is good for uh, Bridgewater to get reps. Um, we're going to need all the depth we can going into the playoffs. Uh, even now Bradford is uh, said to be, uh, his rehab is, is progressing, and 
he also could be activated uh, for the playoffs as well. But, you know, we'll see how that turns out. Um, but, yeah, I mean, really depth is, has been key here all season, whether it's been Keenum uh, or whether it's been Latavius Murray and Jarek McKinnon really stepping up, um, you know, to, to fill the void left by Cook. Um, we've had linemen play. Rashad Hills had to play a lot this season. Um, I thought he played well yesterday. Um, yeah, in, in place of Riley Reef, uh, he's had to fill in for Mike Remmers from time to time. Um, you know, we've had to use Searles, we've had to use Isadora. Um, so I like the emphasis that we put on depth, uh, definitely this season. Um, yeah. And um, <clears throat> let's see here, we got, well, yeah, I mean, what happened in week 15, obviously, um, Philadelphia did hang on to win the game against the Giants. Uh, a game that I thought that the Giants might pull out. It, it took Philly, you know, to the end to, to win that game. Um, Ryan, I'll start with you. Do you what do you think of Philadelphia with Nick Foles? Yes, it was. Yeah, and I know that, um, <clears throat> Dom, you and I have talked about this on previous podcasts, too, about how the Eagles hadn't really faced um, and, and beaten the big competition this season. You know, they did, um, you know, they had some games where, where they did play uh, those teams and, and lost, like, to, you know, to Kansas City, um, you know, while they're, you know, they're beating up on, you know, the Giants or the Redskins and things like that. But um, I think, to, to Ryan's point, too, that Carson Wentz was definitely winning some games for him. And um, it was his, his ability to extend plays that, um, you know, that, that got them to where they are now. And, you know, like, you know, even as Ryan said, Nick Foles is a serviceable guy. He's, a, you know, ex he's got some experience, uh, so he's not terrible, but he's probably not going to put the team on his back. If, if the defense isn't playing well or the running game's not clicking, um, you know, he might not be able to to do what Wentz does. So, um, but, you know, that's that's where we are um, here in, in the playoff picture. Um, you know, it looks like the Vikings are going to prep this week for 
uh, both Aaron Rodgers and Brent Hundley. So, um, you know, according to Coach Zimmer. So, but, you know, that's that's all you can do, really, because, you know, if you don't know who's going to start. But, um, you know, I guess uh, I guess I, I really have no idea how that's going to turn out. Um, you guys have both made good arguments for why he would or wouldn't still play. Um, so I guess we'll... We'll have to see how that shakes out, but um, kudos to the Vikings for for winning uh, the division here um, at eleven and three. Just just rock and roll and skull Vikes. Um, yeah, absolutely, Dom. Um, I'm glad you had a great time at the game. So, um, yeah. Um, thanks, guys, for for joining me tonight on another edition of. Uh, yeah, a Viking spin, and um, we will. Uh, I'll see all you guys on the uh, the pregame uh, podcast when we preview the Vikings Packers. So long.